Hey guys, it is June the 29th of 2020, and I want to go over a technique I use called the Fourier Analysis. Uh, what you do is uh, make it really quick. This is the pound dollar, and what you want to do is get a trend line and let price action kind of do its thing. And what you want to do is get a trend line and get a low, and then let prices do is dance and what you want to do is want you waiting for price action to be below the speed line or trend line whatever you use a uh, GAN fan you want to make sure prices are below the trend line for 30 days in order for you to use the uh, four year string so let uh, price action do its thing you can see that right here it was below two days and then it popped right back right back up so you don't want to apply the uh, four year uh, right here, you can see that price action was a couple of days below, which is nine days, and then it popped right back up. So you want to wait for 30 days. That gives you enough time. That way you know you possibly got a swing top, which is kind of more like a month. Uh, but that also, you know, depends on the, on the angle and the speed line. So let's just continue. Price action is going, 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 going. Let's, uh move this forward and you know price action is doing its thing right there you see that price action is just kind of chopping around chopping around it's not going above it I already have a couple of days I already added uh, a uh, date you can see that right around there that's 30 days from the last close below the trend line and that's when you think, that's when you say, okay, now I got to go put my Fourier analysis on it. What you do is you take all these stuff off. You can leave the trend line if you want. Then you add the Fourier analysis. And one of my favorite uh, tools that I use on timing solution is putting it from the swing low to the swing top. So the rule is, let's uh, recap. You do a trend line. You know, this. you could pick it from here. Whatever, however, you know, this is an art. This is all about what you see on the chart. Uh, but the rule is that price action has to be below the trend line. Um, you could even get it from, from pivoting it from here. Either way, you want price action to be below the trend line for 30 days. And sometimes, you know, it just bounces right after 30 days and it continues going up. And sometimes it doesn't work. But when it works, it works. And the rule is that you want to make sure that you got a swing top and you're giving it 30 days from the speed line where it was kind of bouncing and then kind of lost his momo for you to put your forward analysis. And then that way you can see into the future. So let's look into the future now. And you can see that right here we put a low. And what you want to do is, you know, back then when I started, you know, watching this indicator, I used to think that the projection line was, it's kind of like cycles, that it's going low and then now it's going to go a high and it's going to, you know, make a top on, you know, uh, April the 9th. And with Fourier, it doesn't work that way. Fourier projection line is giving you possible turns, but the, this is not the main, this is probably the main one you want to look at, but sometimes price action, since it's so erratic and it's on its own with volatility sometimes the overtones are the ones that giving you the clue within the big picture of the main projection line of the Fourier so this is a Fourier using the three overtones so what I'm looking at this overtone I'm looking at this overtone I'm looking at this overtone and I'm looking at this overtone but what I'm looking at possible turning points and I'm use, only using three. Uh, Nikola Tesla believes in the 369. A lot of GAN stuff uses the 369. Uh, you could put overtones of nine. I, with my experience, it's kind of cluster and very, very, very full. It's kind of hard unless you got some good eyes. Like this is a uh, nine. You can see that. I mean, it's there's a lot of stuff in there in order to you to pick uh, possible turning points. I use the six. It's a little more easy on their eyes to, to pick possible turning points. But I always start out with three. And three is the magic number for me. So let's uh, continue. You can see price action. Let's uh, minimize this a little more. 
So we can see right here that this high on 3.9 kind of lines up with this uh, overtone. So let's see what price action does. Price action is flushing down. So what I want to see is that maybe there's a possible swing low uh, right here or right here. These are the overtones that I'm looking at here, which is the main projection line, or this overtone right here for a possible swing low. Let's see what price action does. And you can see that it found it on this one, and now price action is going up. So now what I'm looking at possible turn could be somewhere between the uh, 49, somewhere around 49, 411, for a possible swing top. And you can see that it uh, failed. So sometimes you get some missed ones. It went up and it went a little further on the 14 and it started doing its thing. So right here, I'm looking for a possible low uh, either on 430 or a top on 430, depending because we're kind of like inside range. So somewhere around 430, uh, 5, 6, uh, and you hear uh, 511. Uh, either a top or low, depending what direction price action is going. But don't get deceived. This main projection line of the Fourier is not saying that it's going down. It's not like cycles. That's why you have to think a little, you know, outside the box. This is all turning points. It's not direction. It's not like cycle. That's why I like Fourier because it's not telling you the direction. It's just giving you possible turning points. As you can see, pi prices went up, and right here. Uh, topped at 430. This is a uh, overtone that was bottoming out at 430, and then prices pushed lower. Uh, and you can see that right here. What is it? 518. There was really nothing here to indicate that there was a low. So this one, you know, the t the the top here was somewhere around the 21, the 21st. Uh, so maybe right here when it pulled back, it went up. Either way, so price action is going up. Um, so I'm looking for a top somewhere around 6.9 or 6.10. I'm using this projection and then 6.10 right here. Somewhere at 6.9, 6, 6, 10, 11. Uh, this one right here. So you can see that right here when this week in the middle, there's one bottoming here. There's one bottoming here and there's one topping out right here. Now let's see what price action does. You can see that right there on 610, it pulled back down. So we're going current right here, uh, which is today, the 29th. And this is the pound dollar. Right here is the 29th. There is a top here, uh, the 30. There's a top right here. So the 29th today. Tomorrow, there's a 30th, even July uh, the 1st, could be a swing low here, and we go up, or a possible turn right now. But if it doesn't, and it goes back and forth, then the next uh, swing date I'm looking for will be somewhere around July the 10th, or, you know, 10th, 11th. Uh... 11th is probably uh, Saturday, so somewhere around the 10th, uh, if not, somewhere around the 17th. Uh, and that's using this one, so it's the 17th, this one, the, the, the 10th, or the 13th. This is a weekend right here. Uh, right here would be the 21st. So this is, that's if prices continue going lower. This is where I would like, to, where I would probably see a turning point. For prices to go up here, here, 17th, or here on the 20th, 21st. Using this one, this one, and this one. That's if prices continue going lower. If prices go up from here, then I'm looking for a turning point somewhere between 7 10 on the top side to go down. Uh, and if it continues going up, somewhere between the 17th. Uh, from here going down or if it continues going up I'm looking for something somewhere around the 21st to 22nd from up here if it continues going up then to go down 
And that's how I use Fourier analysis. Hopefully you like this video. Hit the subscribe button, hit the alert bell, and smash that like button. And I'll keep you posted on techniques and tricks and tips that I use using mathematics, GAN analysis, and different things to time the markets for swing highs and swing lows.